Good evening, viewers. This is attorney Nuresh Gehi, and welcome to today's show. And uh, let's uh, begin with the headlines for the day. And uh, people have been asking me to mention the headlines. So today is July 15th. And the great news is that students will continue to study from home or have a virtual presence if they cannot attend classes, especially at universities. So the government has withdrawn the paperwork. So a sigh of relief for students who are on student visas and who are being forced to attend classroom sessions due to COVID. And the great news is that the government has withdrawn the paperwork so students who are affected because of COVID and who are kind of attending online courses will be allowed to continue until we see any other changes going on in the future. I think that's a big victory for students and a great pat on your back. So welcome to Green Card with Kehi and folks we have around three four minutes before we officially begin the show. So the rules of the show and are that if you're an existing client Email us at info at gaylaw.com. And uh, if you have any questions uh, for the first 15 minute show, I talk about the substantive aspects of the law. Then in the last 15 minutes, we'll be taking your questions so that we all can kind of answer questions. And uh, you know, uh, uh, I'll be happy to kind of direct uh, the viewers as to what would be the best remedies in their cases. So today's topic is very important, the complications that can arise in spousal visas. So there are many, many complications that can actually become a bone of contention in the entire immigration process. So we'll be discussing spouse-based immigration at length. So we're gonna talk about this from two different perspectives. The first perspective is going to be from a US citizen who's sponsoring someone in a foreign country. And the second issue is going to be about beneficiaries who, have, who are actually waiting for their green cards or who have been sponsored by the US citizen spouse or by a green card holder, and they have issues in the marriage. So it's a very interesting topic. It can become very complicated. And uh, this is one area of law that I love very much because I fought tooth and nail over the years uh, with the, the USCIS and even before the Board of Immigration Appeals in connection with marriage-based immigration cases. And uh, they can be complicated. There are several issues that can arise. 204C, that means marriage fraud. And how can you even fight a marriage fraud case? Can you do something about it if you have a marriage fraud issue in the past? So all those issues are going to be kind of uh, you know, we are going to deal with all those issues during our show and we'll be taking questions. So welcome to Green Card with Gay. And uh, the rules are very clear that uh, the questions will be taken at the very end. And uh, this show is live on Zoom. This show is live on Facebook. And uh, also it will be on YouTube. And uh, so therefore I would request you that if you have a question, uh, the rule is that you have to mention your, your name, your full name, and you have to use your actual name and the show is actually recorded. So make sure that exactly, you know, be very respectful uh, to everyone on the show, uh, but that there are many good people who are actually going to watch the show and uh, therefore we record the show to make sure that, uh, you know, we can help you and as well as understand your questions and concerns. So folks, so we'll be begin with, beginning with everything very soon. So we have just one more minute. And uh, during that, if you have any questions, so the easy way to do it, and you have the chat over here. So you can also chat with us. If you don't want to kind of uh, come on Zoom and talk to us, you can chat with us and uh, we'll be happy to kind of respond. And also our website is gehilaw.com. So some people have asked me, what is the confidential way to get in touch with the law firm? It's info at gehilaw.com would be the best way for you to get in touch with us. So it's 6.30, let's begin with the show. First great news again, for my viewers who just turned on their sets on Zoom. The good news is that the Trump administration has withdrawn their lawsuit in connection with students. So students basically are allowed now to take online classes 
because the Trump administration had kind of filed, a, had basically come up with the rule wherein students should be required to attend classes in, court, in, in classrooms. But uh, when a lawsuit was filed by some of the universities, they backed off and they are allowing students to study online until we have a solution for COVID uh, 2019. So that is great news. So good luck to you students. You all can be at home and you can continue your classes. And uh, you know, let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, there's a saying in the world of legal jurisprudence and Austin on jurisprudence has very beautifully said it, that life of law is based on logic and experience. This is jurisprudence, which is the heart of the legal system. And not many people like to read jurisprudence. Uh, this is because it teaches you the history of law, of how law has actually evolved in the world. And for legal scholars, they're going to love this. So you need to read Austin on jurisprudence, who has said, said that life of law is based on logic and experience. So when the Trump administration came up with this rule that students should be compelled to attend classes in the courtroom, it's defying logic. It's actually defying logic. So you expect the student to go to the classroom and either get infected with COVID or to spread COVID. I never understood that. It's difficult for me to understand the logic behind it. Why would such an abrupt decision be made by people in the administration? So I'm glad that that rule has been taken back and students are being allowed to actually you know, study from home and basically continue with the online program. So let's begin with today's topic, complicated issues in marriage-based immigration. Now, we are going to speak about this topic from two different perspectives. One, if you're an American citizen spouse, if you're an American citizen spouse, or you're a green card holder spouse, and you have sponsored someone in a foreign country, and now, You've been waiting for your spouse to come to America. And it's been a very long time, three years, four years, two and a half years. And immigration is telling you that the case is under administrative processing. And it so happens is that you went to your congressman, you went to the local senator, and he gave you the same answer that the case is under administrative processing. What can you do? Under the law, if your case is pending for more than two years, you should consider a mandamus. And uh, under 18 USC, you are allowed to file a mandamus if the action has been pending with the government for more than two years. And especially if the priority date is current and if your spouse went for a visa or if there is an undue delay in the processing of the case from USCIS or from the consulate abroad, or from the National Visa Center or from a service center. So take an example, you have sponsored your spouse in the United States. You went for an interview with your spouse. You met this wonderful immigration officer. It's been more than two years and you're getting that standard letter that you have to wait, you have to wait. What can you do? If it's more than two years, then you, you should consider filing a mandamus under 8 USC that allows you to basically make sure that uh, after the filing that you will get a decision. The decision may be in your favor. It may not be in, the fa in your favor, but that's what mandamus requires. Under the a writ of mandamus, uh, the law on the point is very clear. It's a command given to the government from the court that you need to issue a decision. And the decision may be in your favor or it may not, but at least you will be able to get to the bottom of your case. Now that's known as federal court practice. And I love doing federal court practice in New York. And uh, it's difficult, but uh, that's what I do. I love difficult cases. So uh, in a sense, that's one way to look at the case. Now, secondly, what you can do is that if you have your case pending and if it's basically, you know, you went for the interview and sometimes what happens in the immigration cases is that you went with your spouse for an interview. Now, either you are not very well prepared or you did not answer the questions properly. Now that can be a matter of great concern, especially because the immigration officer is not happy with your interview. So what happens in those cases is the husband and the wife, or if it's a member of the same sex, 
they'll be called for another interview, which means like if two males are married or two females are married or a member of the opposite sex is married and if the officer is not convinced with the interview, he's going to send you a letter. He's going to tell you, come on in and I want to interview both of you separately. Be very careful when you get that, especially because those interviews are recorded Anything said by you during that interview can be held against you. So it's critically important that, uh, you know, there are sometimes there are people who go with lawyers and uh, they still get the strokes. And sometimes they go on their own. They get another letter in the mail. Be very careful because sometimes when immigration suspects your marriage, I've also seen ICE officers coming into the room at the strokes interview and waiting to see when you commit a mistake, and your spouse, if they give it to them in writing that you're married to him or her for papers, they, can, they even have the right to pick you up and put you in detention. I've seen that happening. So you have to be very careful when you are called for a second interview. That's number two. Now, let's look at things from a different perspective. Now, these are common problems faced by US citizens and green card holders who sponsor their spouses. Now, let's use the word foreign spouses. So now sometimes what happens is that the foreign spouse who's married to the citizen or to the green card holder faces problems. And the problems can really, really be very bad at times. Uh, there can be a serious infliction of em emotional distress upon the foreign spouse. And uh, the pain can be severe and debilitating. So in such an instance, if the foreign spouse, I'm talking about the foreigner who's a beneficiary and looking for the green card, she also has rights in this country, provided he or she is subjected to extreme cruelty. Means take an example that, uh, you know, I'm married to a US citizen and my US citizen spouse She's abusing me. And remember, she has not filed my paperwork and she's an American citizen. Well, she wants to teach me a lesson. And she's telling me every day that I don't want to file for your green card. That's one instance. Second instance is when she's filed for my green card and she's troubling me every day. She's made my life miserable. That's the best way to explain it. And I'm in a situation that I don't want to live with her anymore. What are my choices? Folks, you can consider the battered spouse provision. Under the battered spouse provision, you don't even need a signature from your US citizen or green card holder spouse. You can self-sponsor yourself for a green card, provided you can prove that you are subjected to extreme cruelty. It falls under the Violence Against Women's Act and it's equally applicable to men. So it applies to men, as well as to women equally. So now let's break it down by means of simple examples. So here is an example. You're married to an American citizen. He doesn't want to put your papers in. And if you are being subjected to extreme cruelty, you can apply on your own. You don't need even a signature from him. Secondly, he has already applied for your papers. He doesn't want to go for the interview or he's gone for the interview with you. And if you are being abused, you can still do it on your own. You don't have to beg if you've been a victim of serious abuse. I'm going to repeat myself. You don't have to beg if you have been a victim of serious mental abuse, physical abuse. So keep those things in mind, especially when you are considering the battered spouse provision under VAWA. And I've handled many cases over the years involving VAWA. In fact, there was a case, it's very interesting, that the couple went for the interview. And at the interview, the US citizen spouse said that I'm married to this lady for papers. And the lady was crying and she was referred to my firm by somebody. And then I spoke to the lady. She said, Mr. Gay, I married this man for love and I was living with him. 
and he's done this so that he can make my life miserable. So what immigration did, they put this lady in deportation before the immigration judge. So we had this uh, great judge, she is an amazing woman and a very high regard for this judge, Judge Brennan, and she heard the case. And uh, <clears throat> after listening to the entire case, this lady qualified as a, as a battered spouse. And rather than being in deportation, and after having a charge that basically from her husband that her marriage was not bona fide, we were able to fight it before the judge. And that wonderful lady has got in a green card. Prior results do not guarantee future outcome, but it all depends on how you fight those cases. The leading case, when you're dealing with marriage fraud under Section 204C of the Immigration and Nationality Act is the matter of Taufik. And you should know how to fight Taufik in the courtroom. It's good sometimes to even educate the judge as to what the case law on the point is. So if you have a plausible and a good explanation, judges are very good. They're here to listen to you. But it's the duty of the lawyer to pinpoint the law. Are you going to win all the time? No. The job of a lawyer is to plead the case. The job of the judge is to give a decision. A decision may be in your favor. It may not be in your favor because the no lawyer on the face of this earth can ever guarantee you that you will be successful. Nobody can. And in anything you're going to do, you have to make sure that you put your best foot forward and ultimately, it's up to the government of the United States to give you a decision. And if they deny it, appeal it. Keep fighting your case. But you cannot basically say that, well, it's the lawyer's fault, or it's the judge's fault, or it's someone else's fault. Fortune favors the brave. When the great get going, the going gets great. So that's what you need to do. Now, talking about battered spouses, if you are in a relationship anywhere, and if you feel you are a victim of abuse, you do not have to take that torture. You can actually contact us at infoidgaylaw.com. We'll get in touch with you. We'll analyze your case and we can let you know what can be done about it. The other issue which I've seen in marriage-based immigration cases is that sometimes people get a two-year green card. And that's a conditional green card. Now, after the person gets a conditional green card, the marriage starts falling apart. Welcome to America. I see that very often. So if that's the case, you have to be careful from day one. Don't wait for your two years to expire. Do not do that. Consult an attorney to analyze your situation. Just make sure that you have all the evidence. Now, why is that important? Because after your two years expires, and if you do not have a good, valid, decent reason, and if a case gets denied, your I-751 gets denied, then you are going to be sent to an immigration judge. And you will have to fight your case before the immigration judge. And if the judge believes you, and if the judge feels that you married this person, with an intent to circumvent the immigration laws of the country, you'll get a deportation order. If you win your case, you're going to get the green card. But there's a very good saying in English that prevention is better than cure. So if you are going to plan your case in the very beginning, and if you're going to keep all your ducks in order from day one, then I can assure you that you may not, you may not come to the point of seeing an immigration judge. You can avoid it by putting your best foot forward and fighting the case before the USCIS and convincing them that you married in good faith and your marriage was bona fide and it was not meant to circumvent the immigration laws of the United States. And under 216 of the act, if you're successful, you should be happy. And sometimes I've seen this problem uh, wherein uh, some couples are always in the middle of everything. They say, okay, sometimes the US citizen will tell you, I'm going to make sure that I go through with your green card. Then I divorce you, honey, I love you very much. 
and some of them confuse other person because they have malified intentions they don't have good intentions and the bottom line is that you don't have to tell your spouse that you're meeting with a lawyer meet with the lawyer because you have to secure yourself he or she is not going to secure you this is a question of your future so we get calls from california from south carolina north carolina from every when the country that i'm in the situation and what we do in these cases uh these are cases which are kind of very very important so you can send us an email at info@gaylaw.com i can review it and i can let you know as to what your choices should be in such cases so it's time for us to start taking the questions and answers so if you have any questions let me just type the message the floor is now open the floor is now open for questions and answers on zoom and we are chat all right so let's talk about uh some issues so i mean we've opened up the floor so we have rakesh and he has raised his hand so rakesh uh make sure that you turn on your mic and uh, basically turn off the background sound so it'll be much easier for us to talk good evening rakesh hello rakesh are you there yes sir yes uh i have one question how to get h4 ead sir all right so the first thing is that are you eligible for an h4 uh, h4 ead uh, uh i am on h4 visa yeah but the question is that how long has your wife been on an h1 yeah she is on h1 how long uh, almost two uh, one year uh, she are not eligible for that how long after we get after 6 years uh, uh sir but my uh, previously i won 40 is one approve in 2006 Okay, so can you send me an email for me to check up everything for you? Then I can let you know. Okay, sir. But priority date is current means I don't getting EAD. Yeah, if you if your priority date is current, then you apply for the four eighty five, and that's the best way to get your 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 work permit. But uh, right now, company is shut down. That's why I don't have that. So this is what you need to do. You you can still be eligible. I don't know your case. You may be eligible for hardship. Uh, you know, based. Uh, uh, EAD, depending on the facts and circumstances of your case. So, if you could email me, then I can look up everything and let you know. Okay, sir. Thank you. Because I'll need a lot more details. Send me the I one forty. Yes, sir. Then send me exactly your wife's uh, uh, current, basically H one approval and your H four status. Yes, sir. And if the priority date is current, and if you have been legal, the other thing you can do is you can port that date to a new employer. And But, if you can port that date to a new employer, you may, you may still be eligible for a green card. but new employer is not uh, none of them ready to apply right now due to covid and what is your background it in networking send your 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 email to me let me see of what i can do and we'll talk further okay you sir. have a very good background and i think you should do pretty well in the country soon or later so okay. don't lose hope rakesh you are right. on the right path and it's just a question of time we all are going to go, go, get over covid together safely okay sir thank you be safe and don't worry too much and you you're doing very well so far thank you sir okay be confident that's yes. all i'm telling you at the stage yes sir now this uh, another gentleman who's raising the hand so we could just kind of make sure sayed has raised his hand so sayed first turn on your microphone so i can hear you and turn off the background sound so so you can listen to me properly it is me sayed where are you calling from uh i'm calling from chicago uh, naresh how are you i'm good um i have a question like you know us green card holder marrying a, a canadian citizen uh is she a wife or she can come and stay in usa or we need to apply for the uh, green card for her i think the best thing to do is exactly why don't you apply for the green card and she can come in a year or year and a half or so and you know things have have changed a lot now and uh, that may be one way or secondly if she is here then i love to make sure that i look at her passport and everything and then i can let you know whether she is eligible to apply over here uh uh-huh. like you have the green card for um 5 years 5 years yes okay good so do me a favor send me an email 
yeah. with your phone number. Let me get some more facts. But uh, this looks like a case that can be can be solved pretty much easily, I believe. So no, we can apply for yeah, yeah. You said that we can apply for the green card. In the meantime, they can come and uh, stay one month. I like cannot answer the... you until I get into detailed facts because uh, I'll have to basically talk to you in person about that issue. If you uh -huh. email me, that'd be much better for me to understand the facts with your phone number. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So folks, uh, some questions get very specific. And if it's a specific question, it becomes extremely difficult for us to just give you point blank answers over here. As Esmeraldo, how are you today? I'm good. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, um, so I actually filed a spousal uh, green card or visa for my wife last August, 2019. I paid the initial fee. They sent me, and I sent all the paperwork they asked for of me. Then they sent me a letter stating that they needed proof of my marriage to her. So I had to send pictures of our wedding, um, you know, pictures. Where is your spouse located? Wedding. I'm in Massachusetts. No, where is your spouse? Is she living with you or is she abroad? No, no, she's still in her country. She's in Tanzania. I okay. went to Tanzania and I married her there. Got it. So, and did, you, so did you reply to the request for evidence? Did you reply to them? I'm sorry, what, what did you say? Did you reply? I did. Did you reply I to did. the I, I, I did, I sent them pictures um, that they requested uh, correspondence letters, a copy of my visa, which they already had. Um, my visa that I got when I was in Tanzania, you know, things of that nature. They were asking me, you know, what hotel I stayed in. And I was like, I stayed with her family. My wife is- um, That's fine. But in, after you, you, you mailed it out, right? I did. And so I just checked, this was like two months ago. I just checked and it still says that you're, Documents have been accepted, but it's still under review. And it's been saying that for a, for no, that's a long normal. time. Just give it one more month. Just give it one okay. more month. Because of COVID, they're a little slow because I handle a lot of cases from Boston, Massachusetts too. So okay. I think I would give it one more month. And if you don't hear, then you can email me. But I think I would give it one more month for sure. All right, beautiful. So I did speak with somebody um, at your office. And I'm actually, when I'm done talking to you, I'm going to send my... um. Easy thing to do is an email. send me a reply. I can take care of it for you. I'll, let me just take a look at it, Esmeralda. They told me about your case. So I want to look it up and let you know exactly what's happening over here. Okay, wonderful. I'll email you right now. Thank you Thank so you much, God. sir. Thank you. God bless you. Have a great evening. Wonderful talking to you, Esmeralda. Well. Thank you. Take Thank care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. So, folks, uh, as you all can see that, uh, you know, people are following instructions, and I love that. Uh, and if you are on Facebook now, it's so simple, just click on that link that is right in front of you and see how people are doing it. We, we can take your question and answers. And thank you so much, folks. Now, another question, anonymous attendee, my wife is LPR. Okay, I finished immigration interview. Okay, I will come to US after COVID. Do I get two year green card or 10 year green card? Now, first thing is that if your marriage is more than two years, then you're going to get a 10 year green card. After I come, after, after I get again, can I file divorce <laughs> ASAP? Doesn't seem to be right. It's not a good idea. Try to make up your marriage and live with your spouse because you're opening up a can of worms for marriage fraud and that can haunt you for the future. So please don't do that. Better thing to do is to go for counseling, make things work with your spouse and live with them because under 204C of the INA, if you're charged with a marriage fraud, then unfortunately, your life will be very difficult to, you know, even if you get married to somebody else, you'll be barred from, uh, from filing another I-130 spousal petition. So it can really, really open up a can of worms. So just make sure that try to make up with your spouse and, uh, you know, try to live with your spouse. Not a good uh, thing to do to get divorced after you get your green card in common. Yes, eventually if the marriage does not work out, I can understand that. Uh, but uh, others, you're looking at some issues out here. So that's my answer uh, to the anonymous attendee who has sent a question on a chat. So either you can continue chatting with me or you can come up uh, live on Zoom and we'd love to take your question and answers. And firstly, thank you to all these fantastic viewers for the overwhelming response 
and spread the word. And I'm requesting all my friends on the show to spread the word that we are live and uh, we can talk about these things. Is NBC working? The answer is yes, but it's working at a pretty slow pace and it's taking a little longer. And I want everyone to be a little patient because even I get a lot of calls in my office, what's happening with my case? What's happening with my case? Folks, you all have to know that the current administration has dramatically reduced the budget of immigration as well as of the police officers. Even if you look at NYPD, the sad thing is that there's a reduction of a major budget of like, you know, $1 billion. So if the staff is going to be reduced, the bottom line is that there's going to be a delay. We cannot help a few things. So it's not your fault. It's not immigration fault. It's not your lawyer's fault. Sometimes things become, become a little slow, but you'll have to be a bit patient. And when I get up in the morning every day, firstly, I pray to my almighty God and I make sure that I'm blessed. Like, you know, I'm happy, I'm healthy, everything is great. But second thing which I've learned after COVID is to keep my head very calm, extremely calm, because I've realized one thing, life is too short. What's the use of fighting with anybody? What's the use of it, folks? You all are seeing, this is more into philosophy, that this too shall pass away. Rousseau said that beautifully. And uh, since uh, people love my shows and for my fans, uh, at one point of time, Charlie Chaplin was asked a question, the well-known comedian was asked a question. So he said that, I love to walk in the rain. He told someone that I love to walk in the rain. So everyone asked him why. He said, so that people cannot see my tears. What a brilliant answer, folks. So we all get frustrated. We all have issues in life. But a good human being is somebody who works with someone and tries to make things happen and works as a team rather than actually kind of, you know, putting out a fight for no apparent reason because it's just going to increase your blood pressure and it's going to make you sick. But better calm down and take life a little easy. That's the lesson I've learned from COVID. So be nice to every day, everybody. Life is too short and above all, smile a lot. <laughs> and it doesn't cost you to smile. So let's take another question here. Is there any worry students need to have for the fall? I am, and my visa is expiring soon. So you should not be worried, Nathan, especially because if you are in full compliance of the rules and regulations of the student visa under section 214 of the act, and if you're maintaining a non-immigrant intent, and if you're not violating your student status, uh, then I don't see it to be a problem at all. And after that, after basically your program expires, then if you're an OPT, you have two months to leave the country. And within that, you can either change your status or you can leave the country. So Nathan, I wouldn't worry too much about this. So now another question here uh, from Rakesh. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rakesh. Uh, if you like us, you can vote on Facebook and other places that you love the show, spread the message. And you all have been a fantastic audience. And yes, people want me to announce the show. I know they want to. We are going to talk about battered spouses next week. Why is that important? Because I'm going to show you when you are in that particular situation, how can you come out when you're troubled with your marriage? And when you're seeing your marriage going nowhere and your green card getting nowhere. So that's a topic by itself. So next week, same time, same place, at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, on Green Card with Gehi, we are going to discuss complicated issues and battered spouse cases. Battered spouses and marriage-based immigration are very much re related but what is the difference? We are going to talk about that. And in the meanwhile, spread the message, spread the show and let people know we are live and that'll make all of us happy. Sharing knowledge is the best thing we all can do. Thank you so much for watching Green Card with Gehi. The instant program is an attorney advertisement. Prior results do not guarantee future outcome. We'll be back next week, same time, same place. Keep watching the show on Zoom with Attorney Gehi.